All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Conservative episode 176. My name is Peter Edgar Feliciano. Wherever you're listening, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this with your less offendable friends or more <laughs> offendable friends. Uh, find me on Instagram at Peter underscore Feliciano. Rate this, review it, share it, blah, 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 all that bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure. We have fucking Katie Hopkins on the show. Yay! So excited. So fucking privileged. This is, this is very wonderful. Oh, you so sweet. I know, I'm wonderful. Um, and uh, second thing is, besides my wonderfulness, first things first, share where, share where people can find you and subscribe yeah. to you and things like that. Yes. Well, the best thing people can do really is just Google Katie Hopkins or duck, duck, go Katie Hopkins. Uh, I'm on Instagram, underscore Katie, underscore Hopkins. You can find me on YouTube, Katie Hopkins official. I don't know. All those pictures of me naked doing things there in are? the field. I yeah, with no one else's husband. Yeah. So, you know, whatever takes your fancy, just, you know, dip into all that stuff and whatever you think. Um, what episode did you say you were on? A hundred and what? A hundred and seventy fucking six. Seriously, I'm, I will I'm, just say, you know. I'm essentially anybody, like Jesus is what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> you are the Jesus of the outspoken. Um, <laughs> and you will be crucified for your sin. <laughs> <laughs> 177. Right. I would say to anybody who's just dived on this, maybe finding you from nowhere, Phil, that um, that's right. a reason to subscribe right there. So anybody, I think, uh, who is not from mainstream, isn't being paid a consistent wage, isn't on payroll, who has done 177 of anything, uh, deserves your time to subscribe to them because that is uh, prevailing, that is endurance, that is consistency, and that's hard work. So good for you. Thank you very much. And I'm a musician and I'm half Puerto Rican. So any white people who don't subscribe are being racist, right? That is exactly right. Definitely racist. And you've got a really good shaped head. <laughs> Man, don't start off the episode with a lie. That's not bad. <laughs> you do. You have a cute head. If no, I was in a... It's, it's like an edge. It gets... No, bigger. no, it's a good shape. That's a good head. Thank you very much. I know about good head and that is one. God damn it. Don't make me fly to England. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, uh, first things first, I've prepared for this episode by watching a shit ton of Downton fucking Abbey uh, <laughs> and uh, British Bake Off for some fucking reason. Um, uh, and uh, and I, first wanted to get, I first wanted to get into a couple of things, but uh, just to start off, I don't know why some people in your country say scone instead of scone. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> There's a fucking E on the end of the word. Um, and then uh, the second thing is, and you talk a lot about England and and warning America to not become England. Um, yes. And one of the things that I've gleaned from my travels through English uh, entertainment, if you can call it that, is I think it makes sense for you guys to be as modern day liberal as you are. And the reason why is because you guys have been very practiced at faux intellectual elitism. <laughs> True. <laughs> Very, very practiced at it. And you used to be actually intellectually elite because you were the only motherfuckers who could read and you owned <laughs> an empire, right? For a long fucking time, thousand you know, years or whatever. Um, but I think in general, intel current day liberalism is rooted in I know better than the unwashed masses. I know better. We, us white liberals at the top, know better than the peons down here, which is why it's okay to uh, 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 shadow ban and why it's okay to deplatform and why it's okay to, because we know what these idiots who don't know no fucking better are going to hear some words and they're gonna be swept away um, and can't think for themselves. Yeah. So what, do you think, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, so the first thing I'm gonna need you to do for me is spell me the word uh, G-O-N-E, when you've gone, tell me how you spell that. Listen, this is bullshit. Spell it to I'm not, me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm hey. not gonna start this off. Hey, hey, spell what? it for me. Spell me the word. <laughs> is, all right, what about aluminium? No, There's I not, asked you to spell I, me the word gone. Until you spell it, we're not moving forward. So I suggest you get on with it. G-O-N-E, go ahead, go ahead, say it. Say it, go ahead, it's gone. G -O Let's think, how do we say that word? How do we say the word G-O-N-E? This is, I'm not normally a bottom, but this is working for me. No, <laughs> G-O-N-E, it's gone. Gone, gone okay. which is why it's gone, it's gone. Because both of them have got an E on the end, but guess what? Also, oh. now point oh. two, yes, before you yes. go rambling on on some other thing, 
it's my language, English. You speak it, you speak a lazy version of it. You speak a version where you haven't bothered spelling things correctly, you don't bother pronouncing things accurately, and you don't pronounce your consonants as you should. So quit giving other people lectures on how language is spoken because it's my language and you just do a shitty version of it. Mostly because you spend too much time in drive through getting more takeout. I don't know. So much and racism. finally, so much so, yes, dear, moving but... to your faux intellectual elite, I completely agree with you. So this is where I back off. <laughs> and we have absolutely a sense in this country um, that we're too pig shit stupid mm -hmm. to know anything about what we should be doing, which is why the country Britain is currently topsy-turvy because we got Brexit. And that was never, ever going to be allowed to happen because it was the wrong answer. And we were told, they put a, a letter through our letterboxes. What do you call those things? What do you call a letterbox? Mailbox. Where is your mail mailbox? There we go. You know, lazy up, mail wax, mail wax. Aren't you just giving me a rant on the English language? You can't remember. Yes, letterbox, a place for letters, mail yeah. wax. Okay, so we got a letter through our door telling us the right answer is that we remain. And you know what happened? We came out and we said, sod what your right answer is. We want to leave the EU. And this country has not and will not recover from that because the little people didn't do what they were told. And we're still not recovered for that. And if you ask me, part of the reason that we're now locked down harder than a freaking donut at a Weight Watchers convention right. is because they don't like the little people getting together and talking. Right. Do you think that they're gonna do the same thing that they did over here? <laughs> Which is essentially, <laughs> okay, the dummies have figured out that we can't control them. So what they initially did, I think, was they set up a politician to be morally superior, i.e. Obama. I mean, for yeah, yeah. years, liberals were all on board with, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, Rage Against the Machine in the 90s, you know, Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street. Brilliant. But all of a sudden, because one of them is have is a Habsy, um, and I can say that, well, everybody can say that, because one of them is a Habsy, apparently he's morally trustworthy, right? Up until Trump, like up until Trump, people thought like, yeah, politicians are untrustworthy motherfuckers. They're slimy, they're smelly, they, they're, they're cutthroat. But all of a sudden, because one guy they all really hate, what's more probable, liberals? Answer my fucking question. Do you think it's more probable that suddenly all these cunts who were in the fucking uh, Congress and, and human resources and all that, or um, House of Representatives, suddenly became moral or that you're not good at doing your research? Which do you think is more... <laughs> <laughs> which is the more probable outcome and of course right. you can see this sort of segue coming from obama to aoc i mean it's not even a segue it's more like a truck ramming full blast into the front of your home you right. know this promotion this relent i can feel it as an out i can feel it across the pond the relentless promotion of aoc who's mm -hmm. now also a survivor of a sexual attack you know if you were going to put things in a row of that you need to be in order to be front of the line as a feminist who's been through it all now it's tears 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 suddenly someone right. wants caught in a doorway i mean you know you can see where this is going and it is not going anywhere good anytime fast right so what they think that they did over here and again could be wrong but i think they decided you know what we're going to do some shifty shit behind the scenes since we can't even trust them to vote correctly Yes. Fuck them on the back end um, by doing some cheaty, nasty, fucking slidey shit. So do you think that same thing's going to happen over there? Yes. So funny being in. So I was in D.C. for the installation of Biden, because, of course, it's only enough for me that uh, if someone says you definitely can't do something, you definitely can't go. And right. bear in mind, it's currently illegal to leave your home here in the UK. And then we were told the National Guard have the right to fire on sight. <laughs> so they didn't even have to give you warning to open fire on you. And I was like, yes, I must go to DC immediately. Um, but watching the installation of Biden was exactly, you know, that was like watching what you've just said. So, you know, your articulation of it, that was watching it in real life, watching the installation of a man who didn't reflect the will of the people. And so they had to ethnically, ethnically humanly cleanse the, the capital city right. of the heart of democracy, of the leader of the free world. They had to cleanse the capital city of people in order to make that happen. I mean, what a perversion. I've even had people you know, messaging me asking if the fireworks were freaking real because so many people saw that so much of it was almost a conjecture, you know, an illusion. They 
they got to the point where they believed some of the theories that the fireworks weren't real either. They were just put on TV via visual effects. But here, yes, I think the lockdown here and the, the draconian lockdown where it's illegal to leave your home, it's illegal to be more than seven miles from your home address, where they're not telling us when it ends and it doesn't end before April. That's part of, you know, the British pub scene, British pubs were really, really important to British people. When you go to a British pub and there is snobbery here, there is hierarchy, there's old class systems, you know, culturally we are different. A pub was a place where you leave all that at the door and you go in and we're all the same. We're all the same, we're all first names, no one's better than anyone else. And by locking down that, that to me is a good sign of them trying to turn this over, take this back, you know, stopping the little people talking, which is why people like you matter and anybody who's out there trying to be some form of information sharing or platforms outside of mainstream is really important right. because little people, we need voices really badly. Right. And from my experience, I've had a lot of liberals and a lot of conservatives and a lot of different types of people on my show. And everybody is kind of, and this may be, <laughs> this may, might not be on brand for you, but I think when you get people the fuck alone off of social media, they're actually pretty reasonable most of the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even the liberals I've had on my show, even I had a fucking uh, uh, a full on socialist. I've had him on my show multiple times. Even he doesn't like identity politics. Even yeah. he, as much as he hates Trump, doesn't like fucking Biden either. Nobody uh -huh. likes this motherfucker. So the idea that the idea that we can't handle being alone with each other or that we can't have conversations is really my main push. Yes, my and, main and it's such the truth of the thing, you know, and I'm finding it on Instagram. So for people that don't know, so my, my kind of title, I guess, in the UK or has been for a long time, the biggest bitch in Britain. So I'm supposed to be this sort of monstrous witch, racist, Nazi, Islamophobic, bigot, fattest, whatever label, doesn't matter, we've all been there. But the idea is that I am a monster, a living monster of the right. And um, a weird thing happened with COVID, corona bollocks, whatever, because I'm still speaking my stuff and my stuff now is that this is a load of bollocks for Christ's sake, let people get on with their lives. Young people are going, holy shit, I used to hate you and now I agree with you and they're trying to work out what that means for themselves. And yeah. I'm kind of reassuring them that A, you don't have to like me in any regard. B, we can agree today, tomorrow, you could disagree again, or I could disagree with you. But again, it doesn't mean we have to hate each other. And, right. and it was a sort of a thing, wasn't it? That if you didn't agree with someone, you were required to hate them. Uh, and it became an easy way, obviously, for the media to also dismiss any sort of dissenting narrative because you just turn them into a monster. And then when people meet me in real life, which happens seldom in lockdown, but um, they're always amazed by how little I am because monsters are supposed to be big and they're supposed right. to be hairy. And so sometimes right. they feel me, like they, they rub me to see if I'm kind of hairy or scaly too. And it's like, no, I'm none of those things. I'm just me. So, so it's a weird thing, but that, that hate became associated with disagreement and disagreement with hate. Right. I'll pose this idea. Um, and it's something that I feel like as Jesus, as the Jesus of this the Jesus ship. Of the outspoken. I, I have come down to meet you as um, uh, being on the, on the non-liberal front lines. I've noticed something. On the non-liberal front lines, there's a lot of stuffy motherfuckers, okay? There's a lot of, and, I, and listen, I believe we all need, like you wouldn't ask in the super friends, you know what the super friends are? Right. Yes. You wouldn't ask Superman to talk to dolphins and you wouldn't ask Aquaman <laughs> to scale tall buildings in a single bound. So we all need it. We all need each other. If we need a little small little Jewish law bullet, you need Ben Shapiro, right? If you need <laughs> someone who's a little corny, you need Steven Crowder. But none of these motherfuckers are also focusing on, well, number one, I think part of the other way is that I talk about uh, uh, voting for Trump and also eating ass. That's one thing that is my brand, my fire brand. Um, but the other thing is, is that we don't focus enough on the psychology of the motherfucker, right? I think a lot of people, especially people who follow me, I talked to Mike Harlow, who I, who I got introduced yes. to, sweetheart, my wife, my gay wife. Um, and and uh, one of the things we've talked about is so many times people who follow us on Instagram or wherever, if we look at their bio and it says Patriot Christian, like you're not gonna, like I'm a little too liberal for the conservatives and a little too conservative for the liberals. 
But um, where am I going off on that rant? Essentially to say, we don't talk enough about the psychology. It's too easy for people to go, oh, the liberals AOC just hates her country. Like, no, 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 no. She's a scared little weirdo who doesn't have real masculinity in her life. That's the real fucking problem. She doesn't yeah. have a strong fucking foundation and someone to say, bitch, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? When, when necessary, with love, with love, shut the fuck up. I've had many times people tell me to shut the fuck up with love, but she doesn't have that in her life. And so the psychology behind it is I need to, and she's not a, and she's not a mother, surprise, surprise. No. So especially with the white or white liberals and, and, and liberal women in general is, is I need to mother somebody. And so if I need to mother the poor defensive black, defenseless black people, that's who she's gonna fill that hole in her belly, that hole in her animal by mothering fucking somebody. And so yeah. the, end of the psychology behind it, I think is an important thing that we miss. I, I think you're right. And I think it's a smart way of coming into the argument as well. I also think from an AOC perspective as a haggard old lady, um, AOC has an advantage at the moment because she has these big damn eyes, right? Her eyes are literally like this. They're like two freaking saucers. Right. And she's literally too down. And if I, if I was in my kitchen, I would get the saucers so I could demonstrate. <laughs> I'm looking around for props that would work and I don't see them. But anyway, so she has these two big saucers for her eyes. And it's like, yeah, okay, your eyes are really pretty. And I'm kind of somewhat transfixed, even though I'm maybe supposed to be straight, whatever. But you know, as age progresses and these eyes start to close up, a hooded in old age, some of her charm is going to quickly be dismissed. I totally agree with you on the childless thing as well. Too many of our most re revolting, actually, in the UK uh, leaders are small, childless women, and there's a reason for that. Of course, there is. The lady that runs Scotland, she's called Nicola Sturgeon for the um, uninitiated. You know, she's this height for number one. She's nipple height. That's a height no one's ever supposed to be. Two, she's <laughs> ginger. And I don't agree with ginger people, just, you know. I've always, <laughs> I've always, I've always said, um, you know, ginger babies, which are essentially like real babies, just really a lot harder to love. Right. You know? And um, so she's the ginger dwarf from the North. She's this height ginger, and she basically secretes sulfuric acid I think she probably just dissolves her clothes as she wakes her way to the Scottish Parliament. But these childless women are, are very bitter. And I, I doubt AOC will ever have children because you have to leave a doorway open. And I don't mean that in a vaginal sense. I mean that a doorway open in your life to have children. And these people actually are very closed off because right. they've had to go into self-defense mode ever since they were issued from the womb. Right. And it's a little slapdash, but I feel like I feel like it holds water, the idea, I've said it many times uh, on my show, but I feel like, <laughs> I feel like if you go to more than three marches in a year, you haven't squared it in at least six months, right? So that's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the mathematical facts I talk about on my show. Um, but <laughs> at the I base think of that, it is, at the base of that is when you don't take care of yourself, whether it be having good sex, and again, ladies, let's, let's clarify, there's a difference between having an orgasm and getting properly fucked. There's a God, there's sometimes a huge chasm between I got there and holy shit, I want to cook for this guy. That's how good he cooked. <laughs> so like there's a difference. And when you don't have that, there's something when you're not taking care of yourself, whether it be sex, um, meditation, spirituality, has your relationships with your family, blah, blah, blah. You don't, you cease to have your beliefs, your beliefs have you, right? Yeah. And so of course you're going to go, uh, to the point of this is a war and I'm going to fight and I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to be on Twitter every five seconds and I'm going to blah, 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 blah. It, it is. And then that unfuckability begats unfuckability. So the longer you're unfucked, the more cat lady. It, all it is is that cat ladies have transformed into House of Representatives. Cat ladies have turned into social justice warriors. Yes, I think that's right. That's so that's interesting. The evolution of cat lady because actually cat lady who, you know, in my kind of era is a sort of 60, 70 year old lady, maybe 50, who's never been married, always lived alone, now has a lot of cat smells, a little bit like cat piss, and probably enjoys walking as a hobby because it's a, a hobby of solitude and loneliness. 
And yeah. that's been absolutely pulled back and morphed into these 25 year olds who are incredibly bitter and incredibly, I think original cat lady wasn't actually angry or bitter, not at men or other women. They were just accepting of their way of life and got on with it. I knew they were, yes. But this, this, this is the bitterness of Catwoman as she's got younger, who feels very aggrieved about everything and needs to sort of issue that upon others. And I think, you know, anyone that joined the Pussy Marchers four years ago, you could feel that stuff. You know, people with signs saying, you know, my vagina is made of steel. You know, I look at those signs and think, oh, I'm, you know, I feel a bit sorry for you that you want a sign saying that because they, it isn't, if I come and kick you in the lady bits, you're gonna fall on the floor. And right. B, my vagina's had a 14 pound baby out of it without a stitch. And I don't feel the need to brag about it or put it on a poster. What I'm trying to say is we're just stronger. Yeah. You know, people who have issued stuff are stronger, we're less bitter. People with my vagina's made of steel have issues. Right, I would even venture to say that from my experience, when you have a son, it, 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 it opens your world even deeper. You know what I mean? I'm not sure if you do or not, but um, I think a lot of women who don't understand who we are and on, on, uh, who men are on an animal basis when we're young think that our fumblings in teenagedom or our uh, constant sex uh, in our 20s through 90, uh, our constant thoughts of sex are because we're not raised right or because the culture made us like, no, we are animals, just like your animals who need to yeah. mother. We're animals who are like, fuck, 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 fuck. It's just nature. And these fucking, by the goddamn way, these liberals are big old fucking atheist uh, uh, evolutionists. Wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't it make sense that we're, if you wanna focus on animalistic, on the animal that we are, to, to bring that into the conversation? I think it's, and I think it's why, and I don't mean this in a general casual Fox News setting sense, like conservative women are hotter. That, that's, you know, that's lazy and that's idle. But what I would say is that women of a sort of certain kind of, I describe myself as straight, white, Christian, conservative, married mother of whatever, three children. Um, and I feel like we are generally hotter, not necessarily in a visual way or whatever, just because we are clear, a lot of us are clearer about what we want. Right. And we're prepared to say it. So I'm prepared to say that to a man. And, um, and whereas actually, I think that that takes real self-confidence and real courage on the part of a female. I don't think it's displayed in liberals or, or Democrats or whatever other title you want to put on the other side. I think actually they're weirdly more submissive or shy actually about themselves. They aren't sure about who they are that, you know, they aren't certain about what they would want or even how they would ever ask for it. You know, could they stand naked in front of a guy and tell him what they wanted? I don't know, I could. I would say possibly. I would say, yes, I agree with most of that, but I think I would add one little thing. I think it's probably a little bit that women who are, because my blanket idea for all this is non-liberal not necessarily yeah. conservative or whatever just yeah. as long as you're not fucking them then we're you know um uh but as a as a as a as a sucker for fucking white girls i date a lot of fucking liberals uh because the thing is <laughs> it just is what it is um and and my experience is i feel like people who are non-liberal women who are non-liberal can be questioned without having to clutch their pearls, especially yeah. if they grew up in the fucking street. You know, Camille Pallia? Yes. I fucking adore that bitch. Um, <laughs> Camille, let's put it out into the universe. I want you on my show sometime. Um, uh, uh, Camille talks about how women who are born in the, uh, you know, kind of more blue collar, grew up in the ghetto, they're not petrified by cat calling. How they yeah. can get cat called on the street and they don't have, they can, they, they can either take it as just cat calling and be like, you goddamn right. Or if they want to tell a motherfucker off, they'll tell the motherfucker off. Yes. Not afraid. But white women who grew up in little, like little birds in cages, suddenly they're out in the world and daddy's not there to say, you're a princess, you're a princess, you're a princess. Suddenly get somebody being like, God damn bitch. And they're just, oh, I'm being accosted on the streets, you know? So I feel like non-liberals, not just are open to the idea, like you said, of, of asking for what they want but also can be questioned without suddenly being knocked off their pedestal. Yeah, yeah, for I sure. Think they're kind of more strong in their bones. They yeah, they know where they're at. 
Where, where are you, um, are you, how locked down are you in terms of, I'm not necessarily asking what state you're in, but are you able to go out? What I was going to get to as my question, because I'm interested, is what, how is the dating Single. scene in the state <laughs> in? And how does anyone date if you're locked down where you are? Well, um, I'm in, I'm in Manhattan. I'm in the Upper West Side. And um, hmm, right now, yeah, uh, there's a lot of, I mean, when it, if it, I mean, it's snowing like a motherfucker at the moment, but normally it would be, you know, for the last six, seven, nine, ten months, it's been, yeah, let's go to a park and wear our masks. Ugh. Uh, yeah. um, that's so, what I need. Well, and this is the thing. I think part of the reason why that happens is because I like liberal white girls. Um, I like, <laughs> I like fucking them into a state of reasonableness. Um, but my, I think what happens is there's a keep up with the Joneses about it. So it's not that they really believe that they have to wear three masks, but if you're not a three mask person, yeah. you're going to be perceived as a no mask person. And so I have to keep up with the Joneses, the liberal Joneses by being the most woke, you know what I mean? And that <laughs> translates into dating through, uh, let, yeah, let's go to a park and wear mat like, ugh. You know. and, then, and then that's what my question was going to be. So say you go on a date and you meet someone and they've got a mask on and you go to a park, la la la. How do you then make the transit? So I get the transition if you meet someone in a pub or a club and then you end up going home. That seems very natural and simple. I'm asking you as someone who obviously dates a lot or suggests that you do, you could just be making that up for a, <laughs> a very lonely life, spanking your way through your existence in your own bedroom. Yeah. But anyway, how do you make that transition from three masks in a park to naked at home? You, you, you don't really. I think part of it is it's just the same. First things first, everybody, uh, I'll send you Yelp reviews. Uh, but the other thing, is, <laughs> but um, just to clarify, just to clarify, I think the transition is the same way it always is. Personally, the transition is if a woman is open, like you were talking about, if a yeah. woman is already open mentally to the idea of I want a man or I'm open to a man's energy, or I'm open to being led or whatever, and not yes. led in a subservient no, way. No, no, I know, I know what you're saying. Then I think even it, it normally makes sense for girls to be like, you know, that old, um, you know, that I don't know if you've, what's that goddamn Christmas song? Um, Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> yes. Right where that's not a rapey song, that's just a girl trying to tell herself, Susan, you said you wouldn't fuck on the first date. Come on, Susan, be a good girl. And she's fighting with herself. And so it's the same kind of way now, where if a girl is attracted enough, all these beliefs about, oh, three masks suddenly go out yeah. the door when it's time to get dicked down right. So um, I think it's kind of the same way, except there's a giant, there's a bigger gap in between them opening up. Right. And I to go, does that answer your question enough? Yes, it does. And it also is an interesting idea that there is some sort of 1960s, but 2021 sexual revolution that you could kind of blast our way through this mask down lockdown by calling to people's inner animal energy. <laughs> I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just going to wave my dick out the window and see what happens. See what <laughs> Let's do um, that now. All right. I'm on it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start it's an only fantasy, yeah. motherfuckers. Um, so the, I, I would take it a step further because uh, uh, when you were talking about women feeling uh, kind of cheated, yeah. I would take it a step further. And one of the things I've been talking about the last couple of episodes, especially, is that when femininity, as much as I love you girls, when femininity is, lo is losing its fucking mind, it's not us it's who we should be mad at more, mad, who we should be mad at more is men. It's men. It's weak ass motherfuckers who are lying to the animal in their belly. Like, like you said many times, you cannot be a vegan <laughs> and fuck properly. I would, I would bring it even there. You cannot be a male vegan. You cannot be a male uh, ally. You're trying to nice your way into some pussy. You're yeah. trying to nice your way into, into uh, status. You're trying to say, look at how woke I am. Would you fuck me, please? Ew, no woman wants that in her belly, in her animal. And it bothers me because women need better than that, okay? Yeah. It bothers me because I've been, I've been with girls who are in their 40s who are like, I was married for 10, 15, 20 years. And all of a sudden for the last 10 of it, I was 
absolutely unattracted to this motherfucker. I wonder why. I mean, I led him around by the nose, right? I turned him into a yes deer, but a guy does not get turned into a yes deer by her. He gets turned into a yes deer by him. Yeah, I, it's such the truth of, of many. I think there's a whole, it's not talked about. I won't even say enough. It's not talked about this 40, 50 year old women where I think, you know, so men always want that all their lives, like animal men, great. Women sort of pretend they don't for a period of their life where they're trying to pretend that they're of oh, the good wife and I'm the, oh, and I never look at anything and I, now I don't need this. And I think for a while we convince ourselves of that actually. Right. And then something happens to women around 40-ish where they go, actually, I want what I'm not getting and I want to go find it. And no one is speaking of this because it's a concealed, non-palatable truth of women of 40, 50, which is why I think they are probably amongst the finest of the women out there because they know what they want. They haven't had it and they want to go and find it. And I think it's probably quite exciting. I think the other thing is when, um, at, at my age, when you're with men who are men, then you remember that. And it's not to, so I can talk about being around the Proud Boys or being in Harry's bar or being, and you see them together and you think, I remember this. And it's actually something of a lost art. Men who will just come straight out with what they think and what they're going to do to someone over there. And they probably will do that later too. And um, it's actually a lost art and it's charming and, and very reassuring in all the best sort of ways. Right. And that's, I don't think that as much as, and especially a lot of the people on the non-liberal front, I think get swept away, not just in the slapdash, they're not patriots or they're stupid or whatever, but also in the, um, uh, um, what's the word, God damn it, in the, in the defeatism, in the defeatism of it's all screwed and everything's fucked and yes. blah, blah, blah. Just, I mean, in the, re the, the real reality, whether, even if you don't want to believe in evolution at all, you cannot breed who we are in our bellies out that quickly. It's only been feminism has only lost its, I mean, yes. lost its way for like what, 70, 60, 50 years, maybe, right? Who maybe knows? Somewhere around there, right? The first wave. Yeah, let's stop beating you. I'm on, I'm on board with that, right? When, when requested. When, right? Oh, God damn it. Don't make me fly out there. Um, but we should, we should definitely, you know, give you opportunities that are, that are equal. It's lost its way for only a couple of, you're not going to really breed that out, which, following suit is probably part of the reason why these weak ass men are always the date rapers you know what I mean? right but then so this will be uh, and we should probably make sure that this is all the the conversation that i own i started this this is my fault nothing to do with you so we have the marilyn manson stuff going on right now okay what's that what's that what's that Oh, so now he's being accused of multiple sexual assaults by long-term partners who were saying that he did this to them, that to them, this to them. He's just been dropped from his record label, his last, this all happens in the last like 24 hours. Really? So yeah. I've always thought there was something, um, there is something alluring about him. Obviously he's an odd creature and strange to look at, but in a sort right. of great way. Don't tell me that you dated that guy and you thought he was going to be completely normal when you got inside the house. Like anybody who has like, you know, crazy light white eyes and paints his face black. I'm just saying maybe has a few, you know, sort of things, sexual positions that he prefers. I, I would make that assumption if I met him in the street, right? Sure. So now all of these women have come out and said that he made me do this, he made me do that. He tied me up and he beat me. And I suppose my problem is, and, and um, you know, women will only accept the me too, isn't she brave? Um, I'm so proud of her out and say but I, I read it I guess much more in a male way which is that relationship went on for a very long time that was part of what they were doing in their private life and I think if any of us actually came out and spoke outwardly about what we do in our private life maybe it would come across a bit weird if we dressed it up in a bit of a weird way and okay so they did some tying up and he did some beating and biting maybe that was part of what they were doing but of course if you replay that in the cold light of day at 11 a.m it's going to sound like probably a sexual attack. Yeah. So I, you know, I, and, and the frustration for me is as a female, then you're part of that, right? I want to distance myself from that. So less, less me too, more like, you know, fuck you. Like, I don't want, I don't want to be part of those women. I, if it's true or not, real or not, if it happened to them, I'm sorry. If it didn't, then go away. But I don't want to be part of it 
purely by virtue of being loosely female. Right. The, and, and that goes to, uh, I think, to the psychology angle is uh, that's what emotionally mature people do, is they don't just go black equals good, white equals bad, because they know motherfuckers. You know what I mean? If you think that no woman can be a liar, you don't know no fucking women. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that these women are, but I am saying if you just go, like you said, she has a vagina, let's believe her. Come on. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I think that's where as well, so some of the most energy, sexual energy I've felt in America of late and recently is at things like, uh, I know we'd said if you go to too many protests, you clearly don't get enough sex at home, but um, at Beverly Hills rally, so a Trump rally. And I mean that just in this really, really positive uplift, more like a festival thing where mm -hmm. people turned up and after months of being locked down and feeling terrible and having gruesome news sermon, being depressed, they turned up and they suddenly felt almost like alive. So people were all charged up by each other, you know, and there were mums and children and people being excited and people being happy. And I think that's part of it. Like a part of the thing I like about Trump supporters, what I would call my side, whatever that is, is this sense of sort of joy of life like wanting to live it bigger. I, I want, I genuinely want right now, everybody to, whatever your choice is, live your best bloody life. You know, I want you to go and smear yourself up against everyone. I want you to try and catch COVID if you can. You know, <laughs> in DC, I got to come down in the morning in what we would call the lift and you would call the elevator with the National Guard. And I smeared myself up against those boys just as hard as I could. And the next <laughs> time I came down, they came down the next morning, I'm telling you, not a word of a lie, with riot shields. And I swear to God, they got those just because of me. They were just like, <laughs> keep that angry bitch away from me. So, you know, that's what I want. And one of my frustrations is the whole generation now being kept in and closed in and shut off from people. You know, all that stuff you need to learn by being amongst someone, being amongst the wrong person. Right. We're not getting any of that. And even, you know, you take that as far as the inauguration of Biden, you didn't feel anything because you couldn't feel anything because there were no people. And we need each other to feel stuff, right? I wonder if when we come out the back end of all of this, darling, all of us are going to have some sort of weird jostling with how we feel anymore because we haven't felt big enough for a long time. You know what I mean? Our feelings haven't been big enough. Right. Right. And... And uh, I would take it a step further as well. I feel like part of my um, anger with those with those weak men is that women don't like you're saying about feeling that energy of like you know at the Trump rally in, in Beverly Hills. I guarantee there were some strangers who met up there and went into a back alley somewhere to fool around. Like fucking oh, do it, goddamn it! Oh, yeah. And yet we're supposed to be the stuffy ones. We're supposed to be the footloose parents. Shut the fuck up. You guys have been the footloose parents for fucking years. Anyway, um, and and the idea that um, the idea that uh, women aren't getting fed that animal that's what that's what bothers me and and and, and disappoints me. And here's an, here's the next part of it. You were talking about you've talked a lot about body positivity and how sometimes that can go fucking astray, right? When we, when we co-sign fat people's stuff, right? Yeah. But one of the things that I love that was watching an interview of yours, um, which by the way, I'm the fucking best interview you've ever had. God damn it. I am wonderful. All these other stuffy motherfuckers not doing jerk off hand gestures. Anyway, one of the things I loved, you did an interview with Candace Owens a couple of months ago, and you talked yeah. about how your journey turned into, uh, when you gained the weight and lost it, um, turn into more of an understanding of it. Oh my God. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that, please? Sure, so quick run through of what went on. I um, have always, the idea was that I hated fat people. In fact, uh, we have socialized healthcare. I don't like having to pay for other people's choices. That's it. I don't care if you're fat as the day and you want to buy new hips every other weekend. Brilliant, as long as you pay for them. Where I live, I have to pay for your hips. It pisses me off. Fat people piss me off for that reason. Okay, I decided because fat people piss me off because I have to pay for their issues and their diabetes and their hips that I would prove the point because people always go, oh, you're so lucky to be skinny. Not everybody talks like that, but obviously 
just need that voice for now. You're so lucky to be skinny. And I'd be like, Ugh. I'm not allowed to say you're unlucky to be fat because you own your fat, but somehow I'm be skinny. And I will put on half my body weight uh, in three months and lose it again in three months to prove fat is a choice. So, uh, so that was like 50 pounds on in three months and 50 pounds off in three months. And then the deal was I was doing it so that there were no excuses. So I, I didn't want it so they could say, well, she had a trainer, she had a dietitian, she had a chef, she had a blah, blah, blah. It, it had to be just me, a pair of sneakers, and that's it. And that's what I did. So I became grossly, and pe please do Google fact Katie, um, it ain't pretty. I thought I was going to get these big four stone tits, right? Mm. So I was pretty excited that there was, there was going to be, because I have really small boobs. And so this idea of it having, these, well, yeah, but they, I thought I was going to have these 50 pound boobs. So I was like, yes, this is going to be brilliant. Mm. I've actually always wanted a willy as well. Just <laughs> You know, they have strap on Katie. It's a, it, technology is a wonderful thing. <laughs> well, I love it. What I love about what I just did is that I leaned in to whisper it to you so that it was a secret. And I've just realized it probably isn't that secret. No. So anyway, I thought I would get four, like 50 pound boobs, but actually it all went on. I'm just gonna demonstrate here. So I had this thing called a gunt. Now, I don't know if you would understand gunt, but I suspect yes. you do. For those that are less fast with language, we have things called a cankle, which is when your calf is also your ankle in fact. So the gunt would be that your gut and your gunt is one thing. So it's this huge thing here. Anyway, cutting to the chase, put the weight on, lost the weight. But as part of being this big person with this huge thing and this fat, I had a real moment of kind of, without being too, you know, Britain's got talent or America's got talent about it and having a journey. I bloody got it for once. I got about feeling really crap about myself. I got about not wanting to get dressed or go outside. I got looking into stores that before I would have run in, bought a dress, maybe thrown it on, jumped around a bit, got out the store. I would no way go in that place looking like I looked. I wanted an excuse. I wanted to tell people, oh no, no, I'm making a TV program. I'm not really fat. It, to what extent is that any different than a fat person wanting it to be in their bones or medication or it's the same I wanted an excuse as well um, and I really got a load of stuff that I never got before and I think that really helped as well with me you know trying to tell people that the only reason I bang on sometimes about wanting people to feel a bit better or go for a walk is I want them to like their life I want them I want it to be a lot easier because being fat or not even being fat feeling shit which is where a lot of people are now, which is why I get it. You know, people feel shit and, and, I, and I hate that for them. And actually one of the things with all of the, cause it is really dark over here. We just lost, you know, a 12 year old boy last week, um, a friend um, because he couldn't see the point in going on. And I think one of the things about that is really um, letting people, it's upsetting, isn't it? Uh, letting people acknowledge when things are shit. Um, and I think it's one of the things our media aren't, aren't doing for people here. Um, they're trying to pretend it's all A-OK. -okay. They're trying to make it all upbeat. Let's talk about the great things. Anyone want to ring in with a request or to say hi to a family member and look at this sparkly thing and let's do something about musicals. Whereas in fact, people need a bit of genuine, oh, this is hard. And we need to try and find a way to get through this together, but in a less sickly sweet way, because it's not cutting through. So there's a whole layer of that not only that I got from being fat, but now with this lockdown shit that people are feeling dreadful and they just need a few straight talkers being straight talking people, laughing at, at myself, as you know, you know, we laugh at ourselves probably more than we laugh at anyone else um, to feel a bit better. And so that's probably where I'm coming in at the moment. Um, it's just trying to remind people, you know, that we, we, we will bloody get through this because we bloody well will, but we can acknowledge this is shit. Um, so yeah, so that was, the fat thing was, was, a, was a moment in time, but it was a really, it was a big thing. And I certainly know that if I hadn't signed up to a production company to do it, I would have quit. A hundred percent, I would have quit because right. it, I felt so damn awful about myself. And I didn't realize how much you need to feel okay about yourself in order to be able to function. Mm -hmm. So I got schooled by myself pretty darn hard. 
And there's a very tragic moment that my husband bloody recorded on a phone, <laughs> crying on, I'm very, I'm ashamed, but I'm sharing it because the shame is deserved. And I'm crying on my, what would you call it? Couch, I would say sofa, a couch at home going, I hate fat people for making me do this. <laughs> Imagine the biggest bitch in Britain known for being ballsy and tough. And here I go into the war zone and here I am fighting off these people and fuck you. I hate fat people. I was so reduced. And I should be shamed because it was my bloody idea to do it. And it's probably a shaming idea, but you know, I learned a lot. And, uh, and other people like, you know, got a lot from it. And, and a lot of people also found it as a good way of going out for a walk and trying to feel a bit better, which is, I think, probably what you and I both want for people. We want people to have to feel all right. Right. <laughs> you know. Thank you for for sharing that. Yeah, I, I um, I've been on and off fat, you know, uh, for a lot of my life. Um, I lost 100 pounds a couple of years ago. That's and over the course of the next year and a half, I gained about 70 of it back. And then now I've lost 50 of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, you know? Oh, getting, wow. yes. I like being a big boy anyway. I like being a, yes. you know, it's, you know, not big. I don't, I don't enjoy, not, not that uh, what I enjoy should affect your choices about your physicality, <laughs> but uh, I don't enjoy skinny, anything too skinny. I can't, I, it, ugh, skinny men, no. Yeah. You can't throw a girl around yeah. the room with your if you weigh five pounds. Um, no. Now, um, so so one of the things that I feel like that folds into that is that idea we were talking about regarding femininity and masculinity and how important both energies are. Femininity is extremely fucking important, and I was a part of a spiritual group for a long time where it was like structure, structure, structure only, no room for maternal love, wow. you know, taking care of whatever. And so I was imbalanced that way. But guess what, motherfuckers? That's that same thing can happen on the other side. And I would venture to say that liberals are confusing self-care with apathy. Liberals are confusing, I'm gonna love myself with everything I do all the time is fucking wonderful. Nonsense. And I would bring it a step fucking further that if you really are taking care of yourself, if you really love yourself, then you would manifest it physically. If you're going to love yourself, why would you want you to only live 55 fucking years? If you really loved yourself, if you're really going to love yourself, why wouldn't you want to breathe better, fuck better, live better, have a better time going up and down stairs, have a better time? You know, yes, I understand broccoli is disgusting, but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like self-love, self-care is not, I'm going to sign off on everything I do. That's, I think that's it. I also think that there's this weird, you know, so, so being able to feel physically confident to me, however that is for you or you or you or you, for me, that's this, you know, then I'm physic, I can walk in a room and go, mm, I'm all right. Uh, and that's, that's just my own thing. And I want whoever else has their interpretation of that, which could be being really voluptuous and whatever, brilliant. As long as you can walk in and you feel great and you can read that from a woman, you know, in a heartbeat and women can read it from other women more effectively than men can think. But what's so odd about other women is this idea that I can be, well, I can not have bothered in any regard about myself and I'm still expecting you to think that I'm, hot or all that or to want to sleep with me or whatever and these kind of soy boy cowed males do so they're like oh yes you've made yourself as physically unattractive as repulsive as you could look and you're wearing you know jogging bottoms and some hideous top and you slightly smell of body odor oh I definitely will do you because then it's that sort of it's what you said it's that sort of cowing down to the ugliest thing that you can find because it's deliberately being ugly I can't think of what that what's she called Lena Dunham. Yes, would be a perfect example of that for me. She could be in some form of shape. She chooses to be an ugly sloth. And then there's this sort of, well, and you better want to hunt me. Otherwise, you are discriminating against my fatness. The other thing is, and it's something I still very much adhere to, and I know other strong women uh, feel exactly the same way, is you want to look after yourself in the sense of whatever that is for you, so that whoever you're with, it's like, hmm, this is who I'm with. I want that. I want to be able that whoever I'm with goes, 
this is my wife, this is my partner, this is my whomever I am to them. I want that. Um, and that is that is part of being submissive in some way. That is part of being a female partner in some way. And I love it. It's, it's a strong thing, I think. Um, but no one can talk of that either, of course, because that's an outrageously dated thing and suggests I just sit at home and, you know, sew things and cook the dinner, which right. you know, I can cook a dinner. <laughs> right. But the thing is, is that at where the rubber meets the road, you can believe all the feminism you fucking want. I'm going to say it as crass. I'm going to yeah. say it as crass. So everybody cover your ears. Um, but it was fucking Katie Hopkins coming on my show. You know what you were getting into. Um, yeah. You can be raw, raw feminism, fe feminism all you want. But whose pussy gets wet when I choke them, okay? You can fucking, you can be raw, raw. I believe in equality, blah, blah, blah. Who the fuck likes it when I pull their hair? Secretly, the animal does not fucking lie. You can believe intellectually whatever you want. I was sitting in a room a couple of years ago and I realized I was in San Francisco, the bastion of, of you know, horseshit politics and weak ass fucking men um, and, and, and unhappy women. And I was in this room and I realized if a dude runs into this room with a fucking bat, who is everybody going to look at? Who is everybody going to look to? You can be rah, rah. I have women are just as, guess what? My bicep is bigger than your fucking face. Who in the room is going to be looking? Everybody's going to be looking at me. Oh, help. And I should. And I fucking should. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. But when we leave this room yes. and me just going, hey, girl, you look fucking good. is suddenly going to get me slapped with a fucking HR issue. Right. If we leave this room and me me approaching you or or saying, you know, holding the door open is suddenly ah, be real. You and the animal nature does not fucking lie. You know, yeah, that's I mean? yeah, exactly it. And we're, we're so in danger of having chased all of those marvelous things out. From our look. We're so in danger of having, you know, I, I think particularly for white men, obviously, we're so in danger of having them made them feel that everything they do is wrong even before they start. And yet somehow we would expect them exactly as you say, to be the guy that stands up and defends our honor in a time of need. You have to carry that through women. You have to follow through with that stuff. So if you expect that guy to defend you, then also be honest about the fact that you like it when you're being looked after in the way that you are unwilling to express because it's not seen as, as acceptable in polite company. And I'm not saying everybody has to talk about their sex lives publicly all the time, oh. but I think women should be, oh yeah, I know, I would. I mean, I totally do. But I think, um, you know, women need to be honest. We want strong men, we want to be protected. We wanna feel wanted. We want to feel that someone in the room is strong enough to handle us. And we want to feel that if someone else tried to come and take us, that you would somehow defend. It's animalistic honest it's true and it still maintains and I think the only thing I'd say and I speak on behalf of obviously no one but myself always is that there are a lot of women who do think like me who do respect and are appreciative of gentle men and all that is rough about them and um and you don't hear our voices very often but we're out here and uh and we want that male and we want more of you um, and I think that, I think I feel like that's coming. I feel like it's coming either back or maybe I'm just bringing it alone. I don't know. Um, <laughs> if I have to just bring it alone, I'm bringing it. Um, yeah. but there's a lot of strong women who, who really want stronger men as in stronger than them. And, uh, and we, we do our best to try and find them. Um, yeah, we're out here. Right. And, um, a couple more minutes. Okay. Of course. Okay. Um, so, um, I don't know. I kind of feel like, uh, from my experience, when you, like I said earlier, like when you get people alone, they're reasonable yeah. on the whole, right? When you get them off of yes, social media, like all of the beliefs, how do we, and I think part of the way that we do this, maybe I'm answering my own question. It, really the world is on your and I shoulders, really. You know what I mean? It's, a, we're the spearheads. Um, how do we connect the synapses? One of my favorite two comedians in the fucking world are Christina Pazitsky and Tom Segura, right? They have, a, they have a podcast called Your Mom's House. They're over the top. They're disgusting. They're wonderful. They're, they, they push the fucking boundaries. But 
they're from Los Angeles and Los Angeles, California in general is a poison, especially Los Angeles. You ever heard of that joke in New York? No. <laughs> so in New York, no is no. A San Francisco, a San Francisco, no. And I added this part, a San Francisco, no is no, I don't know. Eh. And then they won't email you back. And a Los Angeles no is, yeah, we should totally do that. <laughs> so so, a new, so Los Angeles, I believe, is kind of a poison. And even though these guys, these crazy ass fucking comedians who have a crazy show and talk about anti-social justice warrior shit constantly, they're like, oh, these PC idiots. Oh, we need to have a rational revolution. They're blah, blah, blah. But then what do they do? They vote for Biden. Surprise, stupid motherfuckers. How do we connect the synapses between, they're literally, they've talked about, they're literally moving out of Los Angeles and following yeah. Rogan for their own reasons or whatever, over to fucking Texas. Yeah, oh yes. And they take it with them. They take it with them. I know, How I know. Fucking stop crazy. It. <laughs> so, you know, I know the whole wall thing drives people crazy too, but I would have a wall around Texas and I would say, if you're coming in, Great, you gotta leave that shit, that blue shit, you leave it at the door, honey bun. If you don't yeah. leave it at the door, you ain't coming in. Um, because this is typical of them. They do this mass migration out of California and they bring that blue crap with them. And, uh, and you're just like, no, you want those high taxes? Stay there and freaking pay them. Um, but this voting Biden thing, and my only sense of it is um, that, that we separate it. You know, politics is a, is a kind of a dated idea in the sense of two parties is a dated idea, right? And I think if you elevate it above that idea of parties and you just do exactly what you're doing, which is create some kind of thread through all of us that's either about psychology or the way we feel or the way we are at home or the way we like our sex lives to be. When you look on that thread that joins through all of us, damn it, we're, we're pretty similar. And a lot of us just want people to live their best life, feel a lot better about themselves, go out there and feel like, yeah, I got this, I'm gonna be good that's kind of our team mm -hmm. and i think the more that we pull that feeling we want to protect that team make them stronger better harder tougher mm, uh that to me is the win and i know i know somewhere along that you have to segue that into politics and policy and people who you vote for in the democratic process and la 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 but on the street and at grassroots and in media i think that's a great team to be on and that's really all i'm about yeah Right. Yeah, I, I honestly don't mind. I mean, a lot of my followers are liberals. A lot of my friends are liberals. A lot of the women I fuck are liberals. I don't I don't care if we just it, like it's OK if we disagree on politics. I don't as much as I have vitri not vitriolic as much as I have a passion around yes. it, when when I'm not I've never had um, uh, maybe this is because I have lived in the Bay Area and in New York. But I've never gone into a Starbucks or into into a, an Uber or whatever yes. and had someone assume. I'm a liberal. Yes. Right. But I've never had someone assume that I'm a Trump supporter. But I've had a lot of motherfuckers assume that I'm a lib that I'm a liberal. I've had a lot of motherfuckers just start a political conversation in a very inappropriate place. Yes. We're in a coffee place. Why are you bringing up politics? Yes. Because you morally think that, of course, this person looks racially ambiguous. So of course they're morally superior. So of course I'm gonna start talking shit about Trump. Like that's rude, right? Yeah, yeah I, I, I exactly know what you're saying. And I think it's one of the interesting things of this next phase is how much we can push politics back a little bit mm -hmm. to not being on the yard sign in the front yard, right? I spent some time in Dallas just before the election, blah, blah, blah. And in the, in the place where they have the most massive homes I've ever seen, I honestly thought I was in Disneyland, but it turned out to be Dallas. And women either go out in the morning, they either walk themselves, walk their asses, or walk their corgi, or walk their husband. That seems to be how Dallas works. What can I say? Yeah. These yard signs are out there, right? And on the yard sign, as you will know, as Americans will know, it says, this house believes, as in this physical house, this place we live in, this home, believes in, Black Lives Matter, it believes that dilly -dilly. it believes that the climate needs, so it, and, it, and a list of 10 things that this family home believes. And that analogy is, is sort of perfect for me. That's where we got to. We got to the point where the yard sign was out with everything you believed on because your politics had to speak before anyone even came into your home. I grew up in a family where my father wouldn't tell my mother, they're still together, they've been married 50 years. Um, my father wouldn't tell my mother what political party he was voting for because it was private. And I think if we can somehow regress to the point of politics being part of our life, 
but not the yard sign that we put in front of our face before, you know, on our hat as we walk down the road. That would be quite charming. And that would be a good thing, I think. Right. And thank God for, for you know, people like you and the fight that you're doing and uh, for the idea of humanizing people. As yeah. long as you can humanize each other, as long as you don't take away my fucking mouth. A, yeah. By the way, let's let's just have a, 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 a hooray celebration that Katie Hopkins, who got banned on Twitter, has been trending like a motherfucker on Twitter. Yay! <laughs> Two things on that. One, I just trend on Twitter, but now I'm not there. They miss me so much. They sort of trend me every day. And two, I had surgery like way back for my epilepsy. I was a big epileptic and I don't mean big, but I mean, whatever, whatever. Uh, and one of the things the surgeon said was, so they call it the deficit. So you might have the deficit of sight. They might, you might lose your sight. You might lose your left hand, your left leg. Like these, are, they call them deficits. I'm like, those are fucking important things in my life that I kind of need. That is not a deficit. And one of the deficits was also my mouth. So when I went into surgery, there was this idea I could come back not speaking. And I saw the look of hope on my husband's face. <laughs> An intensive care, I woke up and I was like, I'm still here, I can still speak. <laughs> it would be amazing though, if you had a Stephen Hawking's device where you're like, I'm the biggest Brit bitch in Britain. <laughs> I know, and I'd have to really, how, how quickly could I get my one-liners out? I don't know, so yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Oh. It's been an absolute privilege just to meet you, you and to, and to work with you is a whole nother thing. So thank you so much for doing oh, this. Oh, bless your heart. Yes. And then when we um when I'm next back in New York, unless you've moved back to the Bay or California, we'll get together and do drinks or other things. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right. Uh, once, one more time, where can people find you, please? Yes. Uh, I think one of the best places is Instagram, underscore Katie, underscore Hopkins, uh, underscore. There's just lots of underscores in Katie Hopkins. Or just Google or duck, duck, go Katie Hopkins. You'll find me. I, I'm pretty hard to miss. Fantastic. Thank you so, so, so much. I'll go ahead and stop the recording right Thank now. Thank you. Bye.